Hey, aloha my internet family. Welcome back to Practical Printing. I'm Chris Russell, your host. And yesterday we talked about the AstroBox. I did an unboxing of it and walked you through the initial setup. Uh, today we're gonna go through the dashboard on the device and I'll poke you through the internal web pages and how it operates a little bit and just get you a little bit more familiar with what it is and what it can do. Um, it's also a couple of things that I found when poking through it that I'm going to throw back to the developers as a few suggestions um, for possible things for improvement. But other than that, it's a really clean, very good interface. So with that, let me take you into the software. Okay, so on my laptop here, we've got pulled up uh, the dashboard for the AstroBox. Now, my H2 I named Bruiser, so that shows up at the top to let you know the name. If you have more than one AstroBox on your network, uh, you, or for multiple printers, you can give each one their own name. It's a fairly clean, very simple layout here. Uh, down at the bottom, you've got a few tabs, and if you hover over them, they show you what they are. Just to get you there quicker, there's File Manager, Dashboard, Control Page, Camera, and Settings. Now each one of those will get you through a different part of the interface. Then up here you also have uh, on the dashboard quick connects to multiple places. Um, so I'm going to show you the settings first because that's the most intimidating part for a lot of people and there's really not much to it. If you click on the settings icon it's very simple. You get your connection to your printer you choose your USB device and your baud rate. We'll click test connection, no connection to printer, connecting, connected to printer. So now it's connected to the H2, which is in a different room. Um, click on your profile. Very simple here. You set your number of extruders. It supports up to four. Your max nozzle temperature. I left this at 280 because I'll control that on my own, but uh, whether or not you have a heated bed, your z-axis movement whether the head moves or the bed moves and then uh, your cancel g-code for the most part most of these will be determined when you went through the setup wizard yesterday and we'll just click save profile next setting is camera uh, if you have a camera connected it will automatically detect it here live cam chat HD um, I just have a little creative labs web camera connected and couple of basic settings here. We'll set this to H624. We'll set the resolution to high and we'll save it. Um, now this is one of the issues that I'm having and we'll come back to this later but I have not been able to get my USB camera which I've used with Octoprint to work with the AstroBox. Um, in all fairness I haven't done any troubleshooting. I have not gone on to the forums or reached out to AstroBox uh, via their tech support channels for any help with that yet. So I'm not calling foul, I'm just making a note that I can't really show you that because it doesn't seem to be working. Network is our next set of settings here. Uh, it's very simple, you have a name and this is how it shows up on your network and it tells you the hotspot and the AstroBox URL so that you can find it up here when you go looking for it in your web browser. Internet settings, uh, this happened when we went through the setup yesterday but if your Wi-Fi network changes for any reason uh, this is how you would point it to a different Wi-Fi uh, router or access point. Wi-Fi hotspot um, here you have your running the hotspot on the Astro Box and then you can turn the hotspot off when a known network is found in the future. Um, I left that on. Now as you saw yesterday on the unboxing, the Raspberry Pi included has a built-in Wi-Fi card. The unit also shipped with an Edimax, I still have the package here, the Edimax Wi-Fi, a USB Wi-Fi dongle. Now the reason that is, is that it creates both a simultaneous hotspot so that you can connect to it point to point from your, your phone or your printer or whatever, I'm sorry, your phone or your laptop or your computer, whatever you want. Um, while at the same time it stays connected to your house network or your business network to be able to go out on the uh, internet and interact with the cloud servers um, back at AstroPrint's headquarters. Um, 
Now the last two settings here, software update, uh, this is something you may want to run every now and then or if tech support tells you to get new features added to the box or anything else that might need updating and advanced and you'll probably never want to touch this tab unless directed to do so by the folks at AstroPrint. Um, okay, down here back on the menu we have the camera. Now here's where I have issues. Uh, if I set this down here you can set it to still shot or camera. When I set it to still shot, I'm able to take a picture. And it works for a still image. When I try to go to video and start the streaming video, I always get this error. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It could be a compatibility issue with my particular camera in the software. Um, could also be since I'm driving it directly off the USB ports on the on the Raspberry Pi that maybe it's not getting enough power. Uh, so I'm gonna need to come back to that one at a later date. Printer controls. This is where you can drive your printer. Um, here you've got your left, right, up and down, which is your X and your Y axis. You've got your Z axis, your vertical. Um, you can set your nozzle temperature simply by dragging this up and down or turning it off turn your fans on and off. If you had a heated bed it would show up here. Um, your filament extruder down here you can set it to extrude or retract uh, if you want to prime your nozzle or if you need to change filament for example and pull it out of a Bowden tube. Um, nice thing here that I do like is you have the option of hitting other and if you know the length of your Bowden tube let's say that's 300 millimeters you can set it to do a 300 millimeter retraction and hopefully pull your cable out or vice versa, get your filament all the way loaded up to your nozzle. Um, that is something you, as an individual you'd have to play with with your printer, but that is a neat feature on the AstroPrint. All right, yeah, AstroPrint, AstroBox. Okay, file manager. Um, I have nothing here yet, but if you wanted to do a print, you would basically drop your STL file here um, and I'll show you how that works quick. We'll go to downloads. I'm just going to grab a Benchy. I know I swore there'd never be any Benchies on the practical print channel, but we're going to see what that does. And it didn't drop. Okay, let's try it this way. I'll do upload, downloads, 3D Benchy. Ah, because I grabbed the G code, not the STL. That's why it didn't work. Astro Crown is needed. Okay, so this is trying to upload it to the cloud. We'll let it log in here. Hopefully that'll just take a second. Um, I'll show you behind it there, you have the option of uploading your file to the cloud or keeping it local. Um, and I don't believe I selected one there. Let's hit escape. We'll do local upload file Oop, and it's asking me to log in again okay. once you do that it's going to redraw um, it's going to show you that the file is there and then it did not go let's try that one more time Okay, there we go, it's uploading it, 1%. I think I was not connected to the cloud as I was trying to do that. Once it uploads the file, it takes you to the slicer screen. Um, this is using the built-in slicer. Analyzes your model. Uh, you choose your printer. If you have more printers, you can tell it to, to use a different one. Tell it what filament that you have defined and tells you a little bit of information about the size and the volume and if it's manifold down here and then you can choose your print quality uh, draft normal or best or if you've defined a custom slicing profile you can tell it to use that. You can also hit advanced slicer settings now 
it looks like the slicer on this is using uh, SLIC3R slicker slicer, however you want to pronounce that. Um, but you have your general slicing settings that you would port over from from Cura or from Simplify 3D or anything else that you wanted to use. Um, we'll just set it to normal with our default just to see what it does. It tells you that it's slicing, it's dicing, you get the little stick figure doing the fencing match up there, and uh, we'll see how long that takes to go. Boom. There it is. It's telling us that it's done. It took 52, oh, it's going to take 52 minutes to print. And it's going to tell us the amount of filament used, the model size, layer height, number of layers. Awesome. And now it shows up in our file manager. Um, just to throw it out to show you what can be done, you can also upload G-code that you had sliced with your slicer of choice, um, S3D, Cura, etc., etc., and that now becomes available as well. It's going, going, going. File is only stored on the Astro Box. Excellent. So now it's showing us there as a printable file. So let's go back to our dashboard and we'll look at our other controls. Now we've already looked at settings, camera, control. Just briefly touch on the G-code terminal. Um, if for any reason you need to do a PID auto-tune or manually send any G-codes to your printer, this is a great function. You can do this just like you would through Repetier Host or through Cura or any of the other um, software platforms, but I don't want to go into that and be responsible for somebody sending the wrong G-code and blowing up their printer. Just know that it is available to you if you need to do that or uh, an auto calibration. Okay, we have the file uploader here as well. And we had the file manager. Now once we had the file manager, um, it's all there. So we'll go back to our Astro Box. And I'm not sure exactly what the difference is here between file uploader. Let's try that. See what it does versus file manager. Okay, so it's encouraging me to slice it again. Um, with the advanced slicer settings. Let's see if we can cancel that and go backwards. We'll go back to our dashboard. Hit our file manager again. This is here. There we go. See the icon that looks like a printer? Click that and it will send it to your printer and start printing. Um, I don't want to do that right now. I don't have filament loaded in the printer. But that shows you how to do it. Those files are also stored in the cloud, so you can see the difference between local and cloud. Um, nice thing about having them in the cloud is if you have more than one Astro Box unit set up on your network and you want to be able to print something from more than one locations, uh, let's say you're running a printer farm of five printers, if it's in the cloud and you're sharing a common account, all of your printers are going to have access to that G-code, so you can print the same thing on each one of them. So it's it's a very cool way to do that rather than just having it local. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is this top bar here. Um, there is of course a power button there to allow you to shut down the device. These are just three information icons that show you that you're connected to astroprint.com, that you're connected to the printer, and that you're connected to the Raspberry Pi in the Astro Box. Fourth thing here is my Astro Print Cloud. That takes you 
outside of your astro box to the astroprint.com website and shows you what you have available there. There are some shortcuts here for um, doing searches, for example, uh, on Thingiverse, others. Your settings for your account. This is where you can build materials profiles. Uh, for example, I built a generic PLA just to be able to show this to you, but you can add additional profiles for ABS, PETG. Your printer profiles, this is where you would create the parameters or input the parameters for your specific printer. Um, if you hit new printer, many of them are listed here. And if you don't find your exact model, you always have the option of doing a custom one um, or starting off with something that's there and going from scratch. Um, there it is, create custom printer. When you do that, you give it a name, let's call it Bob. You can tell it if it's circular or, or um, Cartesian, square. Give it a size, let's say 0.5 millimeter nozzle. How many extruders, whether it has an, a heat bed or not. And if you have any special parameters for that printer, for example, you're using um, something that requires the X3G, or if you want to use uh, Cura instead of Slick3R for slicing, if you have an oddball firmware flavor, such as Teacup or a Mach 3, and of course, if you have any custom G codes for your start commands or end commands for that particular printer for invoking your auto leveling or any kind of calibration that you need to do. I'm gonna cancel that. We'll go back to the dashboard. Now, theory says if the camera was working properly, I would be able to go here and be able to do uh, the camera. I'm able to get the snapshots, I'm just not able to get video out of it. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Um, it also tells me that it's connected to my printer Go back to the dashboard. If you had any print captures, um, this is time lapses that it would have created for you relative to your particular print. You have a print history. You can change your slicer settings. Um, so we had created that generic profile, but you can edit those or create additional settings if you need a fine, a medium, and a coarse, um, or for different printers that if you're moving the box back and forth, between, uh, let's say your Cartesian and your Delta or however you're doing that if you're sharing the box, um, create profiles just like you would in your slicing software. And that's about it. Um, it it's very clean, very simple to use. And um, it, it seems, seems like to be a very well thought out system. Um, I will queue up some prints later today and try to get some Twitter pics out of those um, prints that are being sliced and coming off of the Astro Print, Astro Box. Uh, so I will try to get some Twitter pics out on that today. If you have any comments or questions on the Astro Print box that I might know the answer to, or if I can steer you towards the right people to get you those answers, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I know Astroprint will probably be watching this, uh, so if you do drop a comment, you might even get a response directly back from them. Uh, with that, I hope you have a great weekend. Aloha, and we will see you next time.